Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. First of all, I would like to greet all the respectful participants and organizers of this wonderful conference. I should thank you from the bottom of my heart for your kind invitation to this event in this holy city of Karbala. I am standing here before you as a fellow member of Abrahamic family and the name of my master is Jesus Christ. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Before the beginning, I would like to thank all the participants and the members and the members of this event. I would like to thank you from my heart for your support to this event in the city of Karbala. I would like to stand here in front of you as one of the Holy Spirit of our Lord Abraham and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I came here in this holy place for the first time along with another bishop from Georgia, Bishop Elias, for the day of Ashura in 2014. The moment I stepped in this holy place, I realized how close Christians, Muslims, and other people are. I came here as a part of the quest another year for the identity of the martyr who was brutally killed by the river Euphrates. In accordance with the book of the Jeremiah, the prophet in the Bible, Today, I am standing here in the shrine of the martyr and his companions who, have, who were killed in the north country by the river Euphrates. I came here for the first time. I was with Georgia on the day of the year 2014. The moment I came to the Holy Spirit, I realized how the relationship between the Messiahs and the Muslims وفي المرة الأخيرة أي زيارة الأخيرة التي أتيت إلى إلى هنا كانت لأتعرف على هوية الشهيد الذي قتل بجنب الفرات والذي أشير إليه في الكتاب المقدس في الإنجيل واليوم أنا أقف هنا في ضريح الشهيد وأتباعه الذين قتلوا في هذا المكان قرب نهر الفرات. Who are we, brothers and sisters? What are we doing here? Probably the two most significant questions one can wrestle with in life. Who are we? And what are we doing here? What is your true purpose in life? Similar questions have been asked by Jews, Christians, and Muslim scholars over and over again. وماذا نفعل هنا؟ ربما أهم سؤالين يمكن للمرء أن يتصارع معهما في الحياة. من أنت حقا؟ وماذا تفعل هنا؟ ما هو الهدفك الحقيقي في هذه الحياة؟ لقد طرح العلماء اليهود والمسيحيين والمسلمون أسئلة مماثلة مرارا وتكرارا. Jalal Lidin Rumi, for instance, has beautifully communicated the same message in one of his masterpieces of wisdom and eloquence. All day, I think about it. Then at night, I say it. Where did I come from? And what am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea. وقد قام جلال الدين الرومي الشيخ بإيصال الرسالة نفسها بشكل رائع في واحدة من الروائع حكمته وبلاغته قائلا طوال اليوم أفكر في الأمر ثم في الليل أقول ذلك من أين أتيت؟ وما الذي من المفترض أن أقوم به ليس لدي أي فكرة. My question here is, can the treatise of rights be instrumental in answering these questions? سؤالي هنا هو هل يمكن لرسالة الحقوق تكون مفيدة للإجابة على هذه الأسئلة? The treatise of rights was authored by Ali ibn Hussein, also known as Zain Abd Al Abdin. And Imam Al Sajjad, the four Imams or Imam of Shia Muslims, from the family of the Prophet Muhammad, the Al Hulbayt, the person who was actually a witness and survivor of the massacre which took place here in Karbala. Ali ibn al Hussein, al Maulud, Sanat 
685 ميلادية والشهيد عام 713 كاتب لرسالة الحقوق والمعروف أيضا باسم زين العابدين والإمام السجاد الإمام الرابع للمسلمين الشيعة من عائلة النبي محمد وأهل بيته هو الشخص الذي كان في الواقع شاهدا وناجيا من المذبح هنا في كربلاء The Treatise of Rights is the only work attributed to Imam al-Sajjad other than supplications or relatively short sayings and letters. The Treatise of Rights is undoubtedly one of the most precious pearls among the most important works produced by members of all, of all Abrahamic families. رسالة الحقوق هي العمل الوحيد المنسوب للإمام السجاد غير الأدعية أو الأقوال والرسائل القصيرة نسبيا ورسالة الحقوق هي بلا شك واحدة من أغلى لآل الأعمال التي قدمتها أفراد أسرة نبي الله إبراهيم عليه السلام. The author offers a work which is meant for establishing a society based on social justice, fairness, love. It is meant for establishing harmony between God and human beings, between the human beings and human beings. It covers the relations with the Creator, with one of one's own soul, his family, his society, his government, his teacher, and so on. The author outlines 51 divine rights under seven general categories. ويقدم المؤلف هنا عملا يهدف إلى تأسيس مجتمع قائم على العدالة الاجتماعية والإنصاف والمحبة الغرض منه هو تحقيق الانسجام بين الله والإنسان وبين الإنسان والإنسان ويتعامل مع العلاقة مع الخالق وبروح الفرد وعائلته ومجتمعه وحكومته ومعلمه وما إلى ذلك يحدد المؤلف وإحدى وخمسون حقا إلهيا تحت سبعة فئات عامة. The rights of God, rights of the soul and the body, the rights of the worship rituals, rights of the government and the people, the rights of the family members and the relatives, the right of the different groups of people, financial rights. وهي حقوق الله حقوق الروح وأعضاء الجسم حقوق طقوس العبادة حقوق الحاكم والشعب حقوق أفراد الأسرة والأقارب حقوق مختلفة من الناس والحقوق المالية